What's up, everybody? This is Alex Worldwide Keller, and you're listening to The Card is Going to Change. And let me tell you about one of our beautiful, amazing, gracious, and awesome sponsors. That's right. It's Pollyanna DIY at Pollyanna DIY on Twitter, on Instagram. Go to PollyannaDIY.com, and you can get all sorts of amazing buttons, shirts, pins, the whole kit and caboodle. That's right, PollyannaDIY.com. But now, let's take it to the reason that you hit download, the reason that you are streaming. That's right, the card is going to change. Hello once again, everybody. Thanks for listening to AIW's The Card is Going to Change. Before we get into this week's episode, as always, I want to give a shout out to our sponsors that help us bring the show to you for free each and every week. Firstly, thanks to Angelo's Pizza. They're feeding us here as they always do while we record, and they, of course, bring pizza to you at our live events at Mount Carmel. If you want to try more of their pizza or anything else on their menu, it's all delicious. Head to Angelo's on Madison Avenue in Lakewood, Ohio. And thanks to Smart Mark Video, they record all of our live events. And if you want to relive any of those or watch them for the first time, you can purchase that on DVD or digital download from smartmarkvideo.com. And additionally, head to powerbomb.tv, sign up using the code ABSOLUTE, and you will get a 20-day trial for free. And then stick around and just keep watching the shows that we put out there from the AIW archives. And as always, thanks to Jack Prince, who helps take care of all of our printing and graphic design needs. They can do all of that and more for you, whether it be banners, t-shirts, business cards, flyers, everything and anything. For all that they have to offer, head to jackprince.com. J-A-K, prince.com. Yep, that one right there, the bone collector, Dominic Garini. He's going to join us here on this episode as well. Once again, the Duke is here. And of course, as always, AIW owner John Thorne. My name is Steve Guy. I'm your moderator of sorts. And, uh, well, Dom, I think that this this is maybe uh, an episode. Pull your socks up. Not that you've been looking forward to. I think it's an episode that you would rather not do. But, you know, like in in a... He's literally in a pulling his socks world, up. In a picture-perfect world, this episode wouldn't exist for you, right? Well, no, it wouldn't. Um, because in a perfect world, Johnny Gargano and Candice LeRae would still be here as the heads of the AIW Wrestling Academy. Okay. Or they would both be main roster talents with at least one day a week to give, you know, to training. Um, but, you know, this is in a perfect world, and, you know, it forced me to grow up very quickly in professional wrestling. Um, when I had a school full of kids who needed somebody and some way to lead them, um, was I the most qualified person with the job? Probably not, but I was the person that was there at the time that was willing to dedicate my time to these kids and, uh, you know, and dedicate myself to the, what's become of the IW Wrestling Academy. And this episode really kind of coming... You also, you also had experience in coaching martial arts and things yeah, like that yeah, and structure. Yeah, I had been a uh, amateur wrestling coach for about seven years. Some amateur or some high school football coaching in there too, and then of course I had been a kids jujitsu instructor for upwards of six plus years. That's some pretty good credentials right there. Uh, but this kind of started to take shape, unfortunately, uh, with our show back in September. Well. It's been taking shape for it's longer than that. For a while. But that's funny. You should use the phrase "taking shape" when I think it's the was, exact opposite. Yeah. So this yeah. was th- th- this this topic was actually <laughs> brought up that. by a Twitter user. Uh, it was re- brought up re- by Rick Nelson. Reaching a boiling point. Perhaps? There, yes. there, there we that's go. probably where yeah. we really so, hit. So this was brought up. The idea of this episode was brought up by Rick Nelson on Twitter. Um, 
thank you, Rick, for all the monsters and the Coca Cola and everything you provide us for every show. You're awesome. Yeah, Rick's thank the man. You. And the stickers. And the stickers of. Hey, I got some Florida. stock in Coca Cola. Don't be giving that stuff away, Rick. <laughs> oh, we found well, out he, about he a stock. <laughs> we got one of his stocks. But he asked yeah. some questions. Um, before we get into what will be a long, me likely getting upset uh, period, we'll start off with he asks kind of like the training process and the schedule. Um, for anybody looking to enroll in the academy, um, we are located at Old School Iron Gym in Brook in Brook Park, um, Ohio. Ohio, of course. Yeah. Um, so we're located there. Um, classes are held Monday through Thursday. Um, Monday classes are from five. Monday and Wednesday classes are from five until seven. Uh, Tuesdays and Thursday classes are from six thirty until nine. And that's a loose and seven. That's a real loose. Yeah, both those numbers are kind of loose. Um, but we try to kind of keep beginners lumped up Mondays and Wednesdays and then advanced on Tuesdays and Thursdays. But sometimes I'll overlap with them, um, and we'll get into that later as to why that is. And the process behind kind of how we've done this is kind of multifaceted. One would be I take a lot of what Johnny taught, Johnny and Candace taught us when I was coming up and through. Um, I was always at practice um i would stay i would do beginners class and then i'd stay for advanced class and watch and i take notes so i kind of try to keep everything that johnny taught us in the back of my head um on top of that i've done a lot of seminars since i started wrestling uh i've taken things from there um, i've gotten advice from veterans who have trained before like hot sauce tracy williams and then um on top of that dr tom pritchard put out a great book um, that I use as kind of a guide as well to help me out. Um, and it comes down to the AIW school. Um, the crowd there is going to be much more unforgiving than just about any other indie crowd. So it's not just like you're going to come for three months and you're going to be j- thrown right into action. Um, I think every class that's debuted the last two years has each trained for almost a year before they've made their AIW debuts. At least a year. Yeah, and some way more than that. And do you think that's... You know, it, it, Dom is a guy that's in the industry, and you're going to different mm-hmm. promotions, and uh, you know you've done seminars. You've met guys who have been training. Do you think that that's uh, commonplace? Where does that sit on the scale? I, I guess don't that think I don't year. think that one year thing sits very common at most places. I think that a lot of promotions are like if you're training at somewhere that's connected to a promotion, it's okay, awesome. Let's get you in here. We're going to have a, a show near your hometown and how many tickets can you sell us and let's get you on there and let's ride the golden goose until it's gone. Um, and then it's kind of free for all. If you're going to get better at that point or not, when they stop booking you because your family doesn't care anymore. Um, whereas I think here in AIW Thorne kind of keeps a closer eye on these kids and he trusts me to keep a closer eye on these kids to make sure that they're kind of of a level that we can send them another place and someone goes, wow, those AIW kids are pretty solid. Yeah. Well, and especially when they're getting close to okay we're gonna set your debut match based on how you've advanced then i get like really hands-on with trying to polish things up uh but you know that is a whole different process and i was gonna say you know to dom's point about uh riding the golden goose yes there's an aspect of that that you like to do thorn obviously you know we do some of these smaller shows uh friends and family of these newer students uh, can come there, but you still like to make sure that they are already at a certain level of ability before even getting there. It's not just, hey, we're going to do this, because you, oh, want, yeah. you want that golden goose. You want to ride that out to a much longer stretch. Your well, goal is more sustainability. Well, you, but because that's important, though, because a lot of a lot of the places that Dominic was talking about where they'll train you for two months or three months and then you're like okay go ahead they don't have as many eyes Mm -hmm. on them as we do sure and i don't mean fans in attendance necessarily but there's way more eyes on us than on other places and so as you know the the keeper of the keys so to speak you don't want to put somebody out there in a position that is going to you know, make you look bad. Right. And you know, like uh, the, I I look at that, the friends and family and the tickets coming in or whatever, that's just kind of like uh, a collateral, like just 
not even thought about benefit because, um, you know, these guys, like I've said before, these guys uh, come to train at AIW because they see it, they see the AIW product. So therefore, you know, they want to wrestle for AIW. So it is, uh, with when they sign up, it is my obligation to at least provide them with a chance Mm -hmm. to, you know, uh, to wrestle, you know what I mean? Yeah. For for good or for bad, you know, uh, there's been better students, there's been worse students, but you know, uh, they at least, for the most part, all receive a chance. Uh, however, I don't want to just throw them out there just to have that chance. I want to at least try to, if they're not the best at something, let's well, let's try to conceal some something that you're you're not great at. Let's, you know let's try to just focus on the things that you're really good at and uh, uh, try to make it work within the product. And you've seen uh, over the last year and a half, two years, you've seen a lot of people that have come through the school are now weaved into not only these, you know, uh, secondary shows, but, you know, they are, you know, they're cornerstones of the Mount Carmel events. Um, One thing that I think Thorne does real well and uh, when Biggins was here as well, um, is that they kind of give each AIW kid their own identity. Um, Very rarely will a kid come to the AIW school and he's just a kid of the tights. Um, And like, hey, plucky baby face, come on, baby. Like, I think that each of the AIW kids has their own kind of like unique personality or unique character that, you know, has been built up throughout our time at training and things like that. Whether it be, you know, a Gary the King baller or hell, even like before he got hurt, and God bless him wherever he is, like a Kurt Hurts for that matter. Like even he had a unique gimmick. Yeah. Even hey, look, if there was no AIW school, there'd be no Weird World. Right. Exactly. Oh, so I blame. Who do I blame for that then? Those are those are uh, Johnny Gargano's prize students. Deep, deep <laughs> down, deep down, you actually have DJ Hyde to blame for worldwide. Yeah, because he did train at CCW. He at CCW for a hot second. Did he really? Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I'll. Along with everything else, we can blame on him. I'll blame him for that too, I guess. But so there comes a point in time, though. You guys obviously uh, put forth all this effort, and uh, and and you've got an input. But the students themselves also need to do certain things. And you know, we talked about uh, well, guys be- before you before you get into that. I yes. Just, just say, that's what's that's what's cool about the school is the people who want to go to the school who are thinking about going to the school if they go to the shows they see they know who the students are right because like, they'll say when you know you, when you announce them you'll say graduate of the academy or whatever or it's a student match or something like that so the students know that if they put the work in like it there's visual evidence that they're not just going to take their money Sure yeah, is what I, is what I mean, and and to be honest, the money from the school I do not touch. I do not uh, put it into any of the AIW funds. That money is one hundred percent to pay the rent on where we're at, and for any sort of ring maintenance because we have to have two rings at this point: one for training, one for shows. That's what the training goes to. So yeah. we're not taking any of the money yeah, really. But it's just it's important that they see. Hey, I can get on this Jaylet show in the afternoon. I can get on this bar show. I can do, you know, other shows that are yeah. under under the umbrella, yeah. so to speak. It'd be like if you were going to a trade school, and it shoots you into a job immediately, and it's connected to that school. And you're like, oh yeah, look at that. I can right. And, and if right schools away. that don't have that, there's no payoff. There's no, no, there's it's much no, harder. There's no See, visual, yeah. There's no tangible payoff like there's, there is here. There's a, there's a positive and a negative, negative to that though, and we'll get kind of into that a little later with the issue with kind of like the current students. Well, that's what Steve was getting into, and I just wanted okay. to say that if they do the work, they can see where they can get to. They can right. see, they can see. They're not just going, "Well, I'm busting my ass." And there's no end game here. They can see that if they bust their ass, the end game is they'll be on the show. They'll be on Absolution one day. They'll be, you know, there's something there for them. There's a, there's a. 
the rainbow. The it, proponent to what you just said there, will. Duke, is busting your ass, though. That's why I. That's why yeah, I was you. bringing it up because I know that's where he was going. Thank you. Go ahead, Steve. Well, so this the one aspect that we don't do is you have to also put forth your effort to get better outside of the ring in terms of exercising, hitting the gym, getting into checking shape. your labels. Checking your food labels. <laughs> Checking your food labels. Okay, we're rolling. <laughs> Who does that? What happened? That's that's a Beyond the Mat reference. Beyond the Mat. Check your uh, food. Roll on Alexander. Oh, yeah, Alexander. yeah, You're yeah. Checking yeah. labels. No, the jack in the boxes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. While but, he's 900 pounds. Now, but one of the things, too, is then, and it's not just uh, in the gym, there's also the educational aspect of doing your homework, watching matches, and seminars and those things before I even get to the seminar aspect and really get you heated Dom <laughs> because it all kind of well I guess it all goes together all you know we talked together, about the yeah. Ultimo Dragon seminar and I, we stopped on that episode because we're going to talk about it here and it there was a light turnout and my question really was is that because of a generational gap where now you're getting these guys where they don't necessarily know who Ultimo who Ultimo Dragon is They're, and so they don't, they don't even know who to watch? I guess when you you know when yeah. you give them homework, like not everybody is well, a, no. a huge student of pro wrestling like you are, and you know that. Though. Oh, I know that, and and you know, Thorns figured that out, and I believe I, I've had talks with Wadsworth about this as well, and Joe Sposto. The thing about it is, is we're at a time now in wrestling where wrestling is kind of like a boom, kind of like a weird hot period with like this Bullet Club thing. Yeah, and you know, young kids are getting in, but the the thing I told Thorn was is an 18-year-old kid, let's say we have an 18-year-old kid start the academy, they were born in the year 2000. They don't know what the fuck the Super J Cup 95 was. Right. And chances were... Well, and, you know, I guess, you know, we, we've talked about this on the podcast, uh, you know, weeks ago, but, you know, we'll give them homework every now and then, and, uh, you know, we, Yo, like, gave, we give them Jerry Lynn matches oh. to watch, and they say, oh, the referee from All In? Yeah. Right. That's, that's, that, is, that is not that is If not you didn't lie. punish everybody that said that, Jerry Lynn is one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. The dude is an absolute machine. And if anybody's... Oh, yeah. If I would have been there, I would have probably lost my mind. Well, well I, no, Duke, you're going to lose your mind on this. I've had not only this current class, but two classes ago, the Trey Lamar class. Um, one time, we were talk, I was speaking of Mr. Perfect, and multiple kids in the class go, who is that? Yeah. I mean, you're, we're, we're talking about a generation, too, now. Where you think of a Randy Orton like a, yeah. an RKO, and they think, "Oh, that's the RKO." Whereas we the diamond all cutter, no diamond, diamond cutter, cutter or Ace, or crusher. Ace Crusher. I mean, you so can't get mad about that. Like, no. you can't punish people for when they were born. No, but you if you want, if you, if you want to be okay. successful, you have to. There's and this is we're, where we're, it we're, we're currently watching a network that has everything available yes. from 1980 plus forward someone who doesn't know someone that wants to be a wrestler and doesn't know who mr perfect is it's inexcusable mr almost. perfect is is the walking talking epitome of of a of a heel of a perfect heel if you don't know who he is how can you say you want to be what? i don't i don't know I, well you, no it comes onto this too like it's hard for me as well to to have you know, sympathy for these kids that come in and don't know what independent wrestling is. Maybe they only know what the WWE is because there's so much available out there, YouTube, things like that. Like, Thorne probably is in my boat. When I was 15, I was tape trading. Well, I wasn't necessarily tape trading, but, you know, I was buying things from RF Video, uh, VHS tapes that were just dubbed for $20. Uh, and I don't want to harp on the generation, even though I do no. feel it is generational. Uh, and this is probably going to really not make anybody want to sign up for the school, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it is frustrating because, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't feel like I am old. However, I guess, you know, uh, this school makes me feel much, much older uh, that when I was, you know, a teenager, I'm, you know, going to ECW and I'm buying you know, the Super J Cup uh, 94, and I'm, you know, buying tapes of different types of wrestling. And, you know, I'm the first guy that, I'll tell you, I cannot get into New Japan wrestling or any of that stuff that is booming right now. But when I wanted to be a wrestler, I was watching different styles and trying to 
educate myself because I wanted to be involved in wrestling and I wanted to know as much as possible. These days, it seems like people don't want to be great. They don't want to be, uh, you know, a a encyclopedia of professional wrestling. They just want to be good enough because they've seen how many people have are making so much money right now. I think this is my theory that they feel that they just, you know, they don't need to be great. They just need to be good enough. And I feel like I'll, maybe it's generational, but uh, as time has gone on and I have, had to take on more responsibilities within AIW and have been less involved in the school. When I come in, I see a lot of people that just want to be good enough or they've started, you know, they've had their taste of being on a show and they just stop coming. They don't, they don't can like the thing about being a great wrestler is, is you need to continue your education. You need to continue working in the ring. You need to continue trying new things, but there's a lot of these kids that they've been on a show and that's it. They think they got it. And uh, I just see a lot of people that want to be good enough. And when you say they need to continue to try to do new things, that doesn't always mean you didn't have 20 different moves no. in your move set, right? Sometimes it means, hey, you know what? This actually makes sense for who I am. It, trying new things it means just as much about trying out something within a character as it, as it does exactly a, a move. You know, it, it's well, that just goes, that goes back to something. that goes back to studying people that right. you have similar body types and styles of and, mm-hmm. and seeing how they do things and, and not necessarily copying them, but seeing what they do and what how they approach certain things. It also involves talking to people and asking questions to people and saying, hey, I'm thinking about doing this, you know, not coming up to somebody at training and go, hey, I want to go try the spot that I saw. Let me go try the spot on you. Well, okay, yeah, yeah fine, sure, but... Does it make sense? Do you want to do it? Do it? You know, you have to understand the the logic behind it and the reasoning behind it, right. rather than just going out there and executing a bunch of stuff. And that's you know that's where there's a there's a lot of benefit to the AIW school when you start getting those guys like uh, you know or like a Philly and Marino who are there since they've started coming. They're there all the time, and they're. Are there to, you know what I mean? Then you can really, you know, you could really start tweaking things with them. And, uh, you know, just uh, really, I think that's where things start getting developed. The more you're around and the more you're comfortable with your moveset, okay, now we could, now we can add on to that. Now, you know, you can get the feedback that you're looking for. And, uh, you, you know, you can start to really develop into a pro wrestler. Uh, just being a student that knows how to do their safe, few spots and think thinking that's good enough is what frustrates me uh and you know uh, not to go back on it but you know when i'm putting money on the line to bring in ultimo dragon one of the most world-renowned professional wrestling trainers on the planet in history who has trained some of the best wrestlers currently in existence that thing should have had a line out the door, uh, especially from the people that are involved in the AIW school. Especially at the discounted rate we gave AIW kids. Yeah, because that is the benefit when we do some of these seminars is, you know, uh, if you're an AIW student, you, I will work out a better rate for you based on whatever deal I come up with. Well, and, even, and even that back, I, I guess now we can kind of like do this pile on that we, that we kind of knew this episode would turn into and why I pulled my socks up, as the Duke would say. Um, it also comes down to like you give us opportunities, and I know when I was especially where some of these kids are at, brand new, like you give us the opportunities to drive these guys around. You give us the opportunities to drive around a guy like an Ultimo, or I remember I got a chance to do a car ride with Eddie Kingston, Josh Alexander, and Zack Sabre Jr. when I was young in my career, and I jumped on that in a second, and I would jump on cars with Candace and Johnny. It- because, you know, and not to cut you off, but yeah, no, that's where the business is done. And, like, the business is done in the bar and in the car. 
you know, that's where you're going to learn the most from somebody is in the bar or in the car. And, you know, when I was young, you know, I was, you know, GT Lightning would have me drive Raven around and things like that, you know, and that's where, like, you really can, you know, like, even if you're nervous, you know, just being around that person and seeing how they carry themselves and seeing how they talk and what how they talk about the business, yeah. you know, uh, there is so much to learn. And what makes me mad is there are so few of these guys from, you know, these mid 90s late 90s boom periods of just great wrestling there's so few of them around anymore like like dean malenko when we had dean malenko in and he told me you know he said you know it was just uh, back then it was just you know you worked with this guy and then you got better and then you know you started working with you know this next guy coming up and then he got better and then he became the guy and so on and so on but yeah you know uh after wcw closed and uh, there was just this gigantic gap of like, you know, all this great talent that went whichever way. And then a lot of those guys that were working at that elite level, you know, just, uh, you know, went into the WWE system or, you know, uh, started having to wrestle a different style. And, you know, a lot of just how things were done, you know, is, is kind of lost now. Yeah. And, you know, when you have all, when you have Ultimo Dragon or any of these guys, you know, you have to take advantage. Let me, I'm going to give an example of somebody currently on the roster in terms of young student that uh, does take advantage of the driving around. You know, Wes Barkley has sat, sat in on this podcast on uh, multiple times. It's not be- my shit list, just so because, you know. But, I mean, in terms of taking advantage of, of driving people, and I understand he may not be at training constantly and regularly, but he's doing this other part, and you can tell in talking to him that he's picking something up every time he's with one of these guys that he's driving around to John's point. Right, and, you know, but to to Dom's point is it – it can't just be one thing. Training is a three-part thing. Yeah. I guess if I can, if I can break it down, and you guys can add or correct me if I'm wrong, but the training, the AIW training system, and it's probably like any very good successful training system. If you want to be a successful wrestler, a you have the training at the school itself. You're working with Dom. You're working with, I mean, all sorts of people. Seminars and and Eric yeah, Ryan I mean, is there helping. Yeah, I say for for people who think it's just me, like believe me, it's far from just no, me. No, yeah. You know the Duke. The Duke has come up many a times and helped out. Eric Ryan, Matt there Justice comes up and Matt helps Justice, out. Yep. Um, Eric Ryan all the time. Eric Ryan's up there every Tuesday night and helps me out. So you know that's a portion of it. But then, if you, the most successful guys, and this is you guys, obviously have met even more people than than I have. The other two parts are on you. You're busting your ass in a gym, and you're you're doing your homework. You're you're watching wrestling. You're studying it, just like any other career. You know, wrestling is not an easy thing. If you want to get into this line of work and this is going to be your career, you better strap your shit in here, man. Because more so than anything else, you know, in any other career, you, I mean, Duke, you know, you run your own business. You, there's probably. Things constantly, you've got to look up. You've got to continue on. Oh, I, a, I don't a have a choice. I, you know what I mean? Well, my, my business is is a little unfair because every three or four years they completely change all the rules. Right, but you're so not going yeah, in, I, 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 not going I con- I'm constantly constantly doing continuing education. I'm constantly and, uh, making sure all, all my stuff's up to date. You know, getting renewals and everything else. And that's all stuff and, that's yeah that's on. And I have to do that you. in addition to, you know, the work that I do and, and right. everything else. So, I mean, and something that another promoter once told me was wrestling is not a, a quick degree. Wrestling is like getting a doctorate. Mm-hmm. Okay. Wrestling is you did those four years to get your undergrad. Awesome. Well, now you got another four years to go until you've got your doctorate. And then once you've got your doctorate, that's when you can finally start making your money. And, the, and yep. that's well, the thing it's, that it's supposed to be hard. I mean, it's yeah. it, it's supposed to be That's, hard because it's like anything else. It's yeah. supposed to weed out the people that don't want to put the effort. And let's in. be and let's be real. And Thorne can agree with me. Like when it comes down to how we are compared to how wrestling school was back many years ago, or how other schools are, we are very very. Oh, you convenient. could. Ask, I mean, where me and Duke trained, you would get absolutely fucking. <laughs> feel the threat of violence if you mess something up uh that's how we were trained it was very very tough 
uh, which I see positives and negatives to that. So we do try to create like a more positive reinforcement of a system. Yeah. But maybe it's time to, you know, like I, I said a few weeks ago, the, maybe the mood needs to change a little bit because it just seems like in – you know, I know some people don't agree with the whole paying your dues thing and this and that, but it's a reality. You have to pay your dues in the business no matter what. That's just how it is. And if you're a wrestling fan and you don't agree with it, that's fine. But this this is just how things go. And it's, you know, it's not uh, – things aren't being asked that are uh, some crazy request. You know, it's like – Hey, can you please go pick up this legendary wrestling superstar? <laughs> yeah, and take him to go, to go have a steak yeah. and talk with him, can and maybe please, have one too. Can yeah. you please? Can you please meet us at the training center at eleven a.m. to load the ring up? Can you meet us the day after a show to set the ring back up? Believe me, we're not reinventing the wheel on the things we ask of them. It's not this fucking thing where you see these kids that have to take 200 chops when they're in training. That's never the way it's going to be at the AIW school. It's never the way John wanted it to be. It's never the way Gargano and Candice wanted it to be. They wanted it to be a different environment, which is something that we've done. But as Thorne said, maybe we've made it too easy on these kids, and maybe it's time where, you know, there's gonna be more consequences to actions. Maybe there's going to be some more expulsions. You know what I mean? It's just like... uh when people aren't doing these simple tasks that are asked of them. Yeah. And really the simplest task is you're paying money. All we want you to do is show come up. and show up and get your money's worth. And people are not motivated to do that. It's, it's very like, frustrating. And here's the other thing that's frustrating too. It's like, well then these kids ask, well, will I have the chance to rest on a Mount Carmel car or I have the chance to do this cool, I, this cool thing. Well, well, no, because you're not doing what we're asking of you, whether it be show up to ring crew, whether it be show up to the practices that Thor and I tell you to. At some point, you're you're over the Mondays and Wednesdays. You're only going there and you're just getting your you know, like cardio in. Like You need to be there on Tuesdays and Thursdays. You need to find a way to clear your schedule, get there on Tuesdays and Thursdays to work with stuff like practice matches, work with stuff like the advanced sequence drills we're doing, things like that. But you know, I don't know whether it goes over top of these kids' heads or or what it is, but then they wonder, well, why can't I be on a Mount Carmel show, or why am I not wrestling so-and-so? Well, it's because, you know, we know who's coming. We know who's putting in that extra work, and we know who we want to reward based on that. Well, that's and that's kind of the whole thing. It's like, if you want to do that, if you want to be the guy that comes on Mondays and Wednesdays, or comes once a week, or whatever else... You have to expect that those are the results that you're going to get. Right. You can't half-ass stuff and then say, "Hey, by the way, I'm going to be there at WrestleMania weekend. If you need am me, I, am I getting am I getting something? Or if you need me, I'll be there. Like you know, or whatever else. It doesn't work that way. You don't it, without the effort. There's a, it's a trade-off. It's and, like anything else. You and got, it, you got to. Prove I wrestled. That, you know, and it's fun. It's funny that you said the WrestleMania weekend thing because. That is kind of what led to this ongoing frustration. Well, that's, is that's why I brought it up. I is like is these guys, everybody, everybody having the expectation that if they are an AIW student, they are on this show. No, and this isn't a Music Links show. This is going to be what I could, the best foot that I could possibly put forward at this point, and. I, I had to really lay into them all recently and say, hey, if you guys are not in peak physical condition, if you guys are not training and getting your work to absolutely flawless condition, you still might not be considered to be on this Mania Weekend show because there's going to be so many people available. Now, do I want I, – I obviously am not going to do like every other show is going to do and book a lot of the same well, guys, but I'm not going to put – wrestler x because they're a student out there who is out of shape who work is not as crisp as it should be at this point if they came to training every day uh and that's just the reality of it. there's four it, it, there's four days of training these guys can get a lot of people would kill to have four days inside of a ring like it just it's just the way it is 
Um, and it kind of brings back to my point I was going to bring up to you earlier, Duke, where like it's great that they have this goal to strive for in AIW, but it also breeds some complacency. They say, well, I'm in AIW already, so why should I work harder? Because I'll get on AIW shows. Well, that's, that's what I meant. There it, you go. You have, to, you, you have to decide at some point what you want your spot to be. Mm-hmm. You have to internally make the decision of, okay, this is what I can commit to, or this is what I'm capable of, or this is what I want, this is what I feel like doing, or whatever, and this is as far as I'm going to get. And if I'm okay with that, then that's then you have to accept that that's your spot. But you can't say, well, I've accepted that this is my spot, but this is a really big show, and it'd be cool if I was on it. Obviously, it's an AIW show, so obviously there's going to be homegrown AIW talent on it because that's the whole point. Right. It's booking a whole bunch of people that aren't part of, of the system is, you might as well not even call it an AIW show. So obviously there's going to be people on the show that you know are part yeah. of, of the group. But you have to decide if you want to be that guy that is going to be on that show or if you're not that guy. And there isn't necessarily anything wrong with not being that guy but you have to be honest with yourself and you have to accept it. Correct. Right. I, I don't think, you know, and I, there are people that are totally fine with, they just want to wrestle to be wrestlers and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Yep. Like the weird world has zero aspirations to make it to the WWE or anywhere. You that's know, why I, I did it. And, uh, I mean, I'll be honest. That's why I did it. Cause I, I was 31 years old when I started training. I'm not dumb. I, I could I have done more with it? Probably, but I had a full-time job. I had other stuff that was going on, and I couldn't commit. I could commit an, as much as I could. I did, and so I did what I was able to do, and I've never been mad that somebody else is has, has a better spot than me or never – because that's because I accepted it a long time ago. Yeah. You and know. Like, and straight up, honestly, out of me, like when I started this back in 2015, like – my goal was not the WWE. I mean, like, I'm five foot ten. I'm, am I in the best shape physically, like, like, to look at? Absolutely not. To me, I was raised, like, what I liked when I was growing up was, you know, 05 Ring of Honor and the Super Indies of 05. So my goal was to get to that level. Could I be of, like, the Super Indie level guy? And I'm not going to say I'm to where I want to be with that is, but I'm on my level to being there. And, you know... I always say that if someone asks me if somebody like the WWE were to call me, I would be more than happy to try out and, and do it. But I mean, it's not. I'm not going to hang my hat on it. I have a day job that's pretty solid. That you know, if wrestling doesn't pan out for me in the end, I'm okay with, and I have it. You know. But you have to make that decision exactly. of do I cut the cord and do I jump in with both feet and go? Mm-hmm. Or I'm about, I'm about as deep in with both feet as you can get with with still having a normal day job. Right, probably. and I never. Because of the fact that I started so late, I never really got to that point. And now, of course, it's obscenely ridiculous. But now I have a completely different spot. Exactly. And I'm totally fine with it. I manage. I commentate. I work with young kids when I have to. You know, do whatever I need to do. And that's fine. Because that's... I'm cool with that. Yeah. But I'm the one that decided that. And that's the effort that I, you know, put forward. Or whatever, but to to not put the effort forward and then to be upset that you're not getting what you think you deserve, then you're just going to be a bitter fucking, you know, you're never going to be happy for anybody else's success. You're just going to be a miserable fucking nothing, and you're not going to appreciate it. So you might as well just get out because you're not going to be fun to be around anyway. You're not going to be fun to work with. You're not going to be fun to you know whatever. Uh, John Thorne, is this a fair statement? John Thorne doesn't book where a wrestler is on the card. The wrestler, based on his effort and everything else, books where he is on the card. I mean, you know, to an extent, um, you know, I I say this a lot, uh, specifically to the students. I'm going to give them enough rope to hang themselves with, and if they don't, and they 
listen to the plan in place because there's usually a plan in place for them right. to some sort to try to ease them into the crowd because it is hard to just digest a show of just all students. Sure. You know, you have to, you have to, like we've been doing over the last few years, we have been slowly weaving students in to the foundation of what AIW is now, Not which is new student is on every, show. which is so much different than what the foundation was years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, so to an extent is, they will be given us a, a chance. Yeah. And some guys excel at that chance. Some guys go through the motions in that chance. And, you know, like PME is a perfect example of uh, people that have, that were given a little bit. Yeah. And they use that platform to now, you know they've gotten tag title matches and they're a, you know a, a major player in the tag team division. Uh, that was never a plan for them. You know what I mean? Right. They they were given they were given a chance, and they they ran away with it. You know, they put all three of those things together. Yeah, yeah. you know, and like there are other people that put those things together and have not clicked. Sure. you know, or whatever. You you know, so. It's it's not a it's not a flawless plan, but right. for the most part, you know it, it it works very well. You know, like a Dr. Dan, for example, uh, is he the the most? Uh, is there the most fanfare for Dr. Dan matches? Probably not. However, does Dr. Dan have a great place on the show? Get a reaction that works around his his positives and negatives, because Dan Dan does come to training a lot. Dan does do a lot of extra things. Dan does offer things. There are also things where Dan, you know, he does not excel at. And, uh, you know, that also kind of, you know, that, that counteract the good things that he does. Yeah. But, uh, you know, Dr. Dan is a perfect example of a guy that was just going to be, uh, okay, you know, here's your, here's your one or two matches, your you whatever, know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's turned into, you know, a, a, a nice full-time run for him for the most part. Yeah, he just he keeps trying to do more to elevate himself. Is there still stuff he can continue to do? Absolutely. But, uh, I mean, and that's that's part of it. Yeah, I mean, and that that's kind of the way it is for any of the students. I mean, as Thorne said, you know, he's going to give each of these students enough rope to hang themselves with. If they choose to jump off the ledge and hang themselves, that's fine. If they choose to figure out a way to extend that rope and live, then that's fine as well. If you look at it, almost every single kid that's come out of the school that's been a graduate has gotten some sort of rather large opportunity when it comes to a singles-type match or situation. Mm -hmm. You know, they've either had a chance to excel in it, they've had a chance to fail in it. It's made them grow as a performer in some way. And that's one of the things that Thorne's done. I would not be ready to be where I'm at wrestling wise or the performer I became quickly without a chance to wrestle Zack Sabre Jr. very early in my career, without a chance to work with BJ Whitmer very early in my career, without a chance to work with Tracy Williams and Colin Delaney very early in my career. You know, I got all those opportunities, but it was a lot of what Thorne said. I was there. I was always figuring out ways to be there, stay at training late, um, be all the ring rentals, things like that. Now, you said stay at training late, Dom. So you gave the times. You said, eh, those are, those are kind of loose. Yeah. And then you talked about uh, you can't always be at a Monday. Sometimes, you know, you eventually got to graduate to the Tuesday or whatever. Yeah. You got somebody who was in between classes five to seven on a Monday. They say, hey, you know what, Dom? Uh, there's some stuff I was thinking I'd really like to work on. Could you stay late yeah, with me? Because and you know, I, I can't do this during well, here's this the session. If I don't stay late, there's someone else that's going to stay late, whether it be Derek Direction, whether it be Dr. Dan who's there, whether it be one of the vets who has come there. Yeah. We're going to stay late with you, and we're going to work on it with you. Or if, like, now that I live kind of in the more Cleveland proper area, if one of those students messages me and says, hey, can we get some ring time in? I'm more than fine if I'm not booked or if I am not have other you know previous plans on that weekend. I'll make the ring time for you. I'll go in the ring and we can, you know, we can get whatever you want in, in, um, because that's the way it is as well. I'm going to jump on to Thorne's point of like the working out thing. 
I have myself decided to start working out with with Eric Ryan. Yeah, you know, multiple times a week um, to try to improve my look because obviously, like, I'm conscious enough to know that like I can improve my look. I've been told by other promoters like that if I had a little bit of a better look, you know, there'd probably be more of a spot for me. So it's something that I'm looking to do, you know. And I, some of these kids, they will literally stay at practice, leave right away, and go home. And I know they're not doing anything. Or they're saying they're going to the gym, but I don't know that. We have one of the premier lifting facilities in the state at our disposal, which also comes at a discounted rate if you were an AIW student. Yeah. And at one point, we had about 15 students signed up. And I spoke to the owner of the gym who told me there's about four now, one of which is me. One of which is John Thorne. Yeah. And I haven't you know? gone since how's I had that, pneumonia. Working out for you? I haven't gone since I had pneumonia, you're but you're I'm still fine. Yeah. yeah. So it's just one of those things like, hey, I'm not a performer. This. And, you know, we've had these conversations with the kids. kids. I've had it. I've had Eric, Eric Ryan's had it with them. You know, it's all about, you know, putting that foot forward and, and doing all those things. And people ask me, especially like a young kid comes to me at a show and asks me, like, what advice I have from if they want to be a wrestler. I always say one thing. Head up, ears open. And, uh, you know, I'll just say this, just just general statement to anybody that's listening to this who's thinking about becoming uh, a pro wrestler not you know and this doesn't even apply to just the aw school yeah but just wrestling in general professional wrestling does not owe you anything nope. it owes you absolutely nothing so you you need to come in with zero expectation of receiving anything and pro wrestling is going to ask a lot of you and it's going to continue to ask a lot of you and it's it's a thankless profession or hobby or whatever you want to call it whatever level you're in it, yeah. it, it but the problem is is that overall what people see is they see it's very it's very glamorous from what they see right but it's just like it the it's just like any other job it's just that other jobs aren't glamorous like yeah. my job is not glamorous but it provides me a pretty damn good living you know because i'm good at it and i've been doing it for a long time and it's like anything else, it it either clicks or it doesn't. You 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 sign up for the school. They say, okay, here's the days we train. Here's the gym that's right here. You can sign up and pay half the rate or what whatever whatever the monthly yeah, rate is. Half I don't know. Rate. What half? Yeah. Okay. So it's half half the fee till you can work out here whenever you want. You can do it before training, after training, or a different day. Yeah. Here's you need to watch t- or you need to watch. YouTube of guys that you like and guys that do these certain things and they tell you what to do. It, either it clicks or it doesn't. For my job, you you got to know the tax laws, you got to know the financial statement laws, you got to do this, you got to do that. You got to know how to talk to people, you got to know how to uh, relate to everybody. You got to, you know, it, it either it clicks or it doesn't. Yep. And it if it doesn't, there's nothing wrong with that, but you just you have to accept it. You know, and there's been times where, you know, we have given homework and then we've been like, okay, tell us about that Mr. Perfect match. But, oh, well, I didn't, I didn't have time to watch it. You didn't have time to watch a 10 minute match on a WWE network. I know you have it. Yeah. You know, I think that, I guess, oh, oh sorry. I'm going to, I guess like this is like a two pronged guy here. I guess one of the other things that upsets me and I would assume that it upsets some of the other students that have been at the school you know, an excess of a couple of years. Um, essentially, anybody who, who dates back to either the Turner's days or as we call them, the garage days. When I started training, these kids have no idea how easy they have it. Well, just the facility alone. The, faci- the, f- the facility alone. When I started training with Johnny and Candace, we were at a random garage that was attached to a massage parlor and a corner store on Detroit Avenue where in the summer... It was hot with no ventilation, no air conditioning. Uh, you had little kids throwing shit at you and cursing you out, and it was awful. Um, if it rained, you could do nothing but chain wrestle because there were holes in the ceiling and it would drip in the ring. In the winter, those same holes would allow everything to come in. There was no heat in the building. We would come into practice literally at times with ice patches in the ring that we had to plug space heaters in to melt those out. And now we go into... That's what pro wrestling's all about, exactly. as far as I'm concerned. 
and now we have you know a top of the line facility and these kids take it for granted which rick asked a story about a time where i'd want to throw a student through a wall and there's one time that i will remember more than anything and thorn and biggins could co-sign this more than ever and it was we had just moved in old school iron they had just moved us into the main gym and we had the ring set up next to a set of drywall that is where the walls are you know where yeah. we're at steve oh yeah because you've been there many times to do a promo class yeah well at the end of practice we decided to do practice matches and for some reason i mean I, I don't know if you said this or not before you go on but they built this extension specifically for us they yeah. added they bought the units next to them and did all this construction brand new part of their gym that they extended uh, when we yep. decided to move in literally a week it has been up freshly spray painted murals on the walls too and one is this drywall and there's a practice match and for some reason josh bishop and i want to assume i want to say he was fucking wrestling pv smooth for some reason during uh, this practice match i maybe. could be wrong but sue me but josh bishop's wrestling somebody in this match and for some reason he calls a spot where he gets thrown into the ring post well, instead of you know throwing into the ring post that's not near the wall or anything, he decides to take the ring post closest to to the drywall. Well, of course, dumb fuck gets going too fast, hits the ring post, can't stop himself. Boom! Right in the drywall, just dents the drywall. This is brand new drywall that had just been placed. Literally, had just been spent. They just spent thousands of dollars to spray paint these like really cool murals all across the walls, and everybody's freaking out. And I said, I you know what? Let's just figure out where we go from here. And I remember the next day I got a message from Thorne and Biggins because I think at this time I th- I'd had a, a private chat with just them. And they said, what the fuck happened last night? TJ, the owner, just called us and there's a hole in the wall. I explained the story and they asked what we should do. And I said, just be honest with them. And, you know, hopefully he has mercy on us and doesn't kick us out. Yeah, because we could have been kicked out of that the first week we yeah, were there. Literally the yeah. first week we were there. Luckily, TJ is a very chill individual and was, you know, he understood the story and... You know, we rebounded our relationship with him very well. Uh, and it was just one of those things at times where, like, I legitimately wanted to take what was left of that wall, throw a Josh Bishop through it, and then find a way to spackle it. <laughs> I think, uh, you're going to bury Josh Bishop in the wall? Like Edgar Allan Poe style? I mean, you're going to block him in? Wow. Sure. As, I, as we kind of draw this to a close, uh, it is poetic that the word that comes to mind to me, if you want to be a professional wrestler in general, and more specifically, as we describe what it means to be a part of the AIW Academy, the word is passion. Honestly, with John well, that, Thorne that, sitting here. That's for everything. I mean, that, that's, for, that's for anything you're doing. Well, I think it's you need to have a passion to come in and do it. You need to have the passion to work your ass off when you're not at training. And in turn, what you have heard on this podcast is that you have a collective group that is going to match that passion in terms of helping you and building you up. And that's another thing. You know, when you come to this school, it makes me so mad when a guy is half in and half out and then you know he has made his he has had his debut match and now he's going out and he's getting his bookings that he is acquiring however he's acquiring them and you know i i want there to be an expectation that of what comes out of the school and a a certain level of you know just uh being you know it above not the rest, but above the most, I will say. And when I hear just like somebody goes out and just like is just not well received and it's because they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing, Mm -hmm. but it doesn't, who really cares about them? You know what I mean? Like if they're a flash in the pan pro wrestler, it reflects poorly on AIW overall. And that's what makes me mad. I, I mean, I think that, uh, Pretty much sums things up here, Dom. Yeah, as best I mean, we could. I think, I think it comes down to this too. And I heard an interview with Kurt Hawkins where he says the best. And Kurt runs, you know, a very successful school in the New York area. Um, there's two kinds of kids who come to wrestling school. You have a very well educated kid 
that has probably read countless wrestling autobiographies, has done his research, watches the network all the time, you know, knows what the independents are, he's very well educated, he knows what the process is going to be. Those are fewer, though, than the next one, which is the kid who just watched SmackDown two weeks ago, Googled wrestling schools, saw your school and came and said, well, when do I debut on SmackDown? There you go. Don't be that kid. I'm not saying don't be that kid because it's fine to be that kid. It's just it's, you yeah, need, you but need then to, educate yourself. You need after. To educate yourself once you get in, and you're like, oh shit, SmackDown ain't coming for a while. Yeah, if yep. ever. Yep. Uh, well, I think that kind of uh, perfectly brings it up, sums it up, and and draws this to a close. So for uh, Dominic Garini, the Duke, and John Thorne, my name is Steve Guy. If you want to. Sign up though, still for the AIW Academy. <laughs> We'd love how to have how silly do, of you! No, how do they do that, just, Dom? Feel free to sign up, um, but just choose, man. So that's all. Choose. I know a lot of you guys probably go with the normal ask AI, or the AI wrestling email, but those are all going to get forwarded to me at my actual email, um, and that's just Dominic D O M I N I C at AI Wrestling dot com. Um, shoot me an email, and I've got pricing, uh, the schedule we talked about. And kind of like a, a basic overview of a curriculum that you'll be going through. Um, you know, we don't run sessions like a lot of other wrestling schools. You'll see a lot of wrestling schools that run sessions where they're like, we're on for eight weeks and then we take two months off and then we do another eight week session. Uh, I don't think that that's conductive of learning wrestling the proper way. I think you learn for those eight weeks and then you kind of check out and you kind of have to learn everything on your own. I think that with the constant training we do helps a little bit more. Uh, you're always learning something new or you're refining something that you learned. So, drop in at any time we take students at all times there you go so once again for everybody else my name is steve guy and we'll talk to you next week here on the card is going to change